time we're going to go forth into the word of the Lord. Uh, the word of the Lord is coming out of Romans. Uh, Romans, the uh, fifth chapter uh, is where we, the sixth chapter, Romans, the sixth chapter, and some parts of Romans, the seventh chapter. Amen. 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 So Romans, the sixth chapter, we do stand for the reading of the word of God. Amen. Romans 6, 1 through 7 says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve him. Uh, and the verse uh, 6, verse 7 says, For he that is dead is free from sin. He that is dead from, is free from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this word that you've given. Father, we ask God that you bless it as we impart it to your people. Thank you that it will not return void in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. And for your hearing, we will read um, also the seventh chapter of Romans, verse 18. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Come on, say no good thing. No good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. So we're talking about today uh, where we're coming from in the word of the Lord. Uh, what our topic today is, I thought that man was dead. I thought that man was dead. Come on, let's shout. I thought, I thought that, man that man was dead. Was dead. I thought that man was dead. So as we are looking at the scriptures here, dealing with what Paul is talking to uh, to the Romans, for we must not live in sin, for we are dead unto it nor let sin reign in us. It's basically what he is trying to tell them. But he also says in verse in chapter 7, verse 8, that for I know that in me that it is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. And we will stop right there. So as we look uh, at the subject, uh, one would identify it with murder. You know, when we talk about I thought that man was dead. We're basically dealing with something that is dead, something that is not alive, something that is is, is gone forever uh, uh, in reference to living is concerned. And so even with that, I thought that man was dead. Sometimes people go and they commit sin and they try to kill somebody that they, only to find out later on that person really didn't die. Amen. They find themselves walking on the face of the earth. And then there you are. Man, I thought you were dead. I thought I killed you. You know what I'm saying? I thought I really killed you. But come to find out, you you alive and well. What's up with that? You know, so it says many of us have watched movies or series on TV that, that dealt with uh, homicide. You know, we have uh, all the different type of programs that deals with homicide. Amen. Uh, and, and how they kill people and uh and, and then they start investigating the homicide. Uh, we know there are several movies. I think Law and Order, and and uh, and uh, there's one other one that we watch quite a bit. Law and Order and uh, Criminal, Minds. Criminal Minds. Criminal Minds is another one. Amen. Criminal Minds, where you know you thought that person was dead, only to find out that they're coming back after you, after you thought you done killed somebody. Homicide, uh, of course, is is uh, is defined as the killing of one person by another person, uh, or a person killed by someone else. It's basically what homicide is. Now, homicide happens, of course, in various ways. Usually, uh, the person that is being killed or targeted to be killed does not know that they are targeted. Oftentimes. 
people will find you out and try to find you and try to come and kill you and, and, and target you uh, just like how they may do the president and assassination. They won't let it be known that they're trying to kill somebody. Amen. Amen. But they will try to spy them out, hide, and then try to kill the person that's dealing with homicide. Then nowadays people would just straight up come up in your face, point a gun or, or stab you and take you out in broad open daylight. They really don't care whether you know they're going to kill you or not. Amen. If they want to kill you, they're going to kill you. Amen. But that's really not totally what we're dealing with. We just wanted to define what it means to kill or to murder uh, or reference to homicide. But the purpose of the homicide is due to retaliation. Uh, who one plots to get back at someone for what they have done to them, or revenge is the same thing. If you have done something to me, I'm coming for you. I'm going to take you out. You know, you're not going to talk about me, or you're not going to hurt me, or you're not going to abuse me, or, or you're not going to beat me, and I not come back after you. Uh, I'm coming back to get you. And when I come back to get you, I'm going to make sure you don't get up again. Amen? Don't you see that happening in the earth today with all the gang violence and all the different things that are happening in the earth. Wives is killing husbands. Husbands is killing wives. Men in the church is going up killing and shooting the pastor because of different situations happening in the earth today. We see in the news that pastors are being taken out because of some things that they've done wrong. Amen? And how many know that your sin will find you out? Your sin will find you out. What you think you've gotten by with today, amen, God, if you don't repent of that thing, God will expose it, amen, before the whole world. And we don't want that to happen, amen. We want to bring our members under subjection. So we deal with that. We deal with protection or self-defense. Now, if someone has... Uh, has, 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 is coming at you to harm you or, or reflect you, uh, our, 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 our reflections, uh, is sharp, reflect, I'm sorry, is sharp, and we naturally try to defend ourselves. Uh, we won't let no one harm us. You, it's a natural thing to see somebody coming to you and you feel like they're gonna have, do something against you. Amen. You try to have a reflex to, to protect yourself. Amen. Amen. And that's really what a lot of that is. You have to protect yourself. You have to keep yourself, amen, in a way of protection. Now, we're just kind of dealing with some natural things right now. Amen. Then we'll go to the spiritual. You know, we deal with things that type and shadow. We bring the natural and then we bring the spiritual, amen, in. We also deal with premeditated murder, amen, to plan in advance or uh, beforehand the murder. There's people that will plot and plan to kill. Amen. They may uh, plan to kill somebody. Amen. Just like the bombers uh, 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 in Baltimore. Amen. Boston. How they uh, were trying to plan to kill and take some people out. That was premeditated murder. Uh, Bin Laden and all the different types of, of, of people that are terrorists. Amen. Plan to kill. They premeditate. They plan to do this thing. But the one that we need, amen, to define now is spiritual murder. Amen. And we don't really want to know that word murder is a strong word right there. Amen. So we'll just say we need to kill our flesh. Amen. Come on and shout. We need to kill our flesh. And this is where we're going for from in the scripture when it says, I thought that man was dead. As noted in the scripture in Romans 7, 18, it says that in our flesh dwelleth no good thing. This lets us know that anything uh, in our flesh is not good. Anything that's not good needs to be gotten rid of, right? Right? Uh -huh. And we're dealing with even the consciousness of man and even the actions of man. Colossians 3 and 5 tells us to mortify our flesh. It means to kill out the things that are not of God. Amen. And we know as we look at the things of the flesh, amen, we also can go to, amen, Galatians, which deals with the workings of the flesh. And some people really don't want to deal with the workings of the flesh. But the workings of the flesh will cause you to miss heaven. The workings of the flesh will send you, amen, to a devil's hell. And as we go to Galatians, the fifth chapter, and we read the workings of the flesh, amen, it says in verse 
uh, 16. This I say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now we're going to deal with some of the lust of the flesh. It said for the flesh lust is against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary the one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that ye would but if ye be led of the spirit come on and shout led of the spirit but if ye be led of the spirit ye are not under the law now the works of the flesh are manifest amen it means that if you don't kill that thing out if you don't cause these things to come under subjection amen they're going to manifest. And when they manifest, they're going to manifest in these ways. Amen. Adultery. Amen. Adultery can come from a thought. Amen. That you've got it about somebody else's husband or wife. Hallelujah. The next thing you know, if you're not careful, you're going to manifest that thing from a thought. Amen. To full-blown adultery. Amen. The next thing you know, you'll find yourself in the bedchambers. Amen. With somebody that is not your mate. That is adultery. Amen. Fornication is when you're with somebody that is not married. You're not married to them, amen, and you are committing sexual acts with them, and they're not married. That is fornication. If you have a mind thought, you're saying, oh, I see somebody I would really like to be with, and hallelujah, you better think about, like Beyonce says, you got to put a ring on it. Hallelujah. You got to put a ring. You got to make it yours, amen, in order, amen, for you, amen, not to commit fornication. That's one thing she said that I agree with. you got to put a ring on it. Amen. Come on and shout. Put a ring on it. <laughs> amen. Amen. Then it deals with uncleanness. It's dealing with all types of impurity. Amen. Lasciviousness. Amen. Naughtiness. Hallelujah. Idolatry. Amen. A lot of things that are happening in the world today dealing with idolatry. Amen. We have idols all around us. We have the titans as an idol. Amen. We have the stars as an idol. Some people have their cars and their houses as an idol. Some people have their man or their woman. Amen. As they call the postal wife. Amen. On their arm. Amen. Because I got a good looking husband. I got a good looking wife. That's my idol. Amen. And every time I'm around them, they make me look good. You know what I'm saying? Amen. We're just talking real right here. We're just talking real right here. Amen. Lasciviousness and idolatry. Witchcraft. We know that witchcraft is strong in the world today. Some people will go to the soothsayers and they'll go to the fortune tellers. And some people will call the prophet's line. Amen. And they say, can you give me a prophet? And the prophet say, that's for a charge. That's not a true prophet. They may have the gift. Hallelujah your prophecy. Amen. But they're using it for gain. And that is a sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Witchcraft and, and all the different types of uh, seances and all the different types of curses that you try to put on people. Amen. We know that there's a lot of secret societies that deal with witchcraft and, and they deal with all those type of evils. Amen. Variants and emulations. Right. We don't have time to really go through a whole lot of this, but it also deals with envyings and murders, deals with drunkenness. Deals with revelings, which means rioting, hallelujah, and such like. And it says, of the which I tell you before, I've also told you in times past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. And in order to inherit the kingdom of God, you've got to walk in the spirit. But how do you walk in the spirit when you've got these things happening to your flesh? Even after you've been baptized in Jesus' name and have received the gift of the Holy Ghost, you still have some issues in your flesh. Hallelujah. Because we are in the flesh, but we still can walk in the spirit. Now we're going to deal with the spirit. The spirit says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. The main area uh, uh, of the fruit of the spirit I do want to deal with is temperance. Amen. Temperance, self-control. In order, and hallelujah, for you to know that that man, that flesh man is dead, you've got to walk in temperance. You've got to have self-control. You've got to allow the Holy Ghost to lead and guide you. Hallelujah. If you've got a problem smoking, hallelujah, 
of you, you've got to walk in self-control. you got to say, Holy Ghost, take a hold right now. Hallelujah. It calls me to leave the cigarettes alone. I know, hallelujah, it's unclean. I know it's impure. I know it's going to affect my body. It's going to cause me possibly to have cancer. Amen. And I don't want to go out like that. So I need self-control. I need temperance. Holy Ghost, hallelujah, I call on you now to cause this self-control to come up in me so I can put away the unclean things. Hallelujah. Uh, next thing you know, you got rid of that and you've been delivered of that. Hallelujah. The next thing you know, you've been tempted and tried of that. How many know that even though you may put some things away and you feel like you've been delivered of that same thing, the next thing you know, the temptation of that thing will come back up again in you. Hallelujah. You're thinking, oh, I put old Sally away. I put John away. I stopped messing with John. Hallelujah. I stopped drinking. I stopped gambling. And I stopped doing all the different types of evils in the world. Hallelujah. But somewhere, somehow, after you've been born again, that temptation is going to come up again. Hallelujah. But when it comes up again, it's going to show you where you are. And as it shows you where you are, the temptation come. Hallelujah. You're going to say, wait a minute. I thought I was delivered from that. Wait a minute. I thought I got rid of that. Wait a minute. I thought I stopped that smoking and drinking. Then why do I feel like I want to pick it up again? Hallelujah. There needs to be some more deliverance. There needs to be some more deliverance. you got to go into prayer and to fasting and ask God to show you the things that's in your flesh that's not right. Hallelujah. God, I thought I put that thing away. God, I thought that thing was dead. Only to know that you only took it away. You know how sometimes you put something away and you say, People will say, you need to get rid of that. You need to get rid of that. Yeah, yeah, you need to get rid of that. And you like it so, you'll say, well, I tell you what, I'll just hide it. I'll just hide it. I won't necessarily put it away and just totally get rid of it. I'll just kind of hide it a little bit. Hallelujah. But then later on, something will come up to remind you of that thing that you thought you had gotten rid of, that you hid away. The next thing you know, you'll go trying to find it. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Or you could be searching, hallelujah, even when you're cleaning the house. Or you could be searching through treasures and different things. The next thing you know, there you are. And you'll find that thing you thought that you had gotten rid of, but you didn't. I hope I'm making sense in here today. Hallelujah. But what we're coming to tell you today, that if you don't kill the flesh, and if you don't kill that thing that is trying to drive you, it will come up again. Come on and shout, it will come up again. It means I've got to kill it. Because I thought that man was dead. The next thing you know, you're going about your business. I remember telling somebody... A long time ago, hallelujah, when I first came back in the church, I thought for sure, I knew for sure that I had stopped drinking, I had stopped smoking, I had stopped doing drugs, I stopped doing all those different types of things. Hallelujah, then one day I'm sitting up in church, know that I hadn't touched this stuff in a long time, and I'm sitting up in church and all of a sudden I could just smell beer, and then I could just taste the beer in my mouth mouth. And I'm like, what on earth is this? I know I haven't drunk a beer in years. I know I haven't smoked a joint in years. Now all of a sudden I'm sitting there feeling like I'm high as though I just smoked a blunt. Hallelujah. And I'm sitting there I'm like, I know, I know I haven't smoked. I know I haven't drunk in a long time. And really don't plan on doing it ever again because I gave my life to Christ. Then all of a sudden I'm sitting in church and this is hitting me. And I'm like, what on earth is this? Where is this coming from? Why am I smelling weed? Why do I feel like I'm high off of weed? I just got through praising the Lord. I just got through blessing the Lord. Hallelujah. Just got through worshiping the Lord. And I'm sitting in here hearing the word of the Lord. And the next thing you know, I'm feeling like I'm high. The next thing you know, I have the taste of beer in my mouth. I had to get up from there. And when I got up, I went to the bathroom. And I began to pray unto the Lord. I said, God, I know I 
I haven't touched this stuff in years. What is this that's coming up on me right now? And the Lord told me, he told me, he said, temptation will come to you as though you had just gotten rid of it. But you got to know that you know that you know that you've gotten rid of that thing. And you can't allow the enemy to pull you back into that trap. You knew how you felt when you got high. You knew how you felt when you drunk the beer. Hallelujah. But you got to remember that you know how you felt when you got delivered. You got to know how you felt when you got the Holy Ghost. You got to know how you felt when your sins were washed away. So you got to remember those things. That when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against it and say, No, this is my child. She's been born again. She no longer walks in sin. Hallelujah. And the lust of the flesh. If you really want to walk right with God, hallelujah, you got to take her, hallelujah, hold her, hallelujah, of the Holy Ghost and say, Holy Ghost, I need you to work in me right now. Holy Ghost, I need you to stand up in me right now because the enemy is coming against me with temptation. I knew and I thought that man was dead. Hallelujah. But in the midst of just worshiping, in the midst of sitting, Satan don't care where you are. He don't care if you're sitting in the pulpit. Temptation will come to you. Just because you're called a pastor don't mean that you're above temptation. I go through temptation just like anybody else. And I'm transparent about it. Hallelujah. I'm not one that's going to sit up here all pious and high and almighty like I don't have problems. Hallelujah. I'm working through this situation just like you are. Hallelujah. But sometimes you got to make up in your mind and say, I thought that man was dead. Matter of fact, I know he was dead. I saw my deliverance. I saw my healing. I knew when it went for me. Hallelujah. So I command the enemy to leave me alone. And you got to tell the devil, devil, I'm putting you under my feet. You will not have me bound to drugs. You will not have me bound to alcohol. You will not have me bound to the lust of the flesh. Come on, a shout, I will not be bound. Not be bound. Come on, a shout. I will, I will not be bound. I will not be bound. Hallelujah. Because the enemy is going to come against you again. That's why the, 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 the thing is saying here, I thought that man was dead. Hallelujah. When you find yourself in a situation and you're dealing with the lust of your flesh, hallelujah, you got to grab a hold to the Holy Ghost and let the Holy Ghost do its work in you. Hallelujah. Because the scripture deals with a lot of different things. And it also says as such were some of you. It says were such were some of you. Such were some of you. It don't mean that that's you now. So you got to grab a hold to that word were. That's what I was. I used to be a drunkard. I used to lay around. I used to sleep around. How do you, I used to be a fornicator. I used to be a adulterer. I used to be a gambler. I used to be all of these type things. A liar. I used to steal. I used to cheat. I used to be a liar. Whatever it was that you used to be, you got to remember to tell the devil that's what I was. But now I am a child of God. I got a most I am now a child of God and I walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Hallelujah. You got to know without a shadow of a doubt that whatever God is calling you to do, that you can do it. He says you can do all things to him that strengthens you. If you're feeling weak in your flesh, you get down on your knees and you begin to pray and cry out to the Lord God I don't like these feelings because I thought that man was dead God I don't like the desires of my heart because I thought that man was dead you know what I'm talking about today God I don't like being drawn back into some things because I thought that man was dead hallelujah but I find temptation coming up on me but Lord I'm crying out to you 
you because I know that thing is dead. I'm crying out to you to help me. Help me to get over this temptation, God. Help me to get over this situation, God. Lord, I want to be holy. I want to be right in your sight, God. I want to be pure, God. Hallelujah. Help me, God. Come on and shout, help me, God. Help me, God. Help me, God. Hallelujah. Help me, God. Me As we look back at Romans, the seventh chapter, Paul was saying, Hallelujah, for I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. Hallelujah, hallelujah, but for the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. He's letting you know that there are some problems that he's going through, and there are some spiritual bodies, some spiritual situations that he's dealing with in his flesh. Hallelujah, but there, now you've got to realize that you can get help. Hallelujah, in these situations, because you have to, amen, give yourselves totally over, amen, unto the Lord. You have to give yourself totally over to the Lord. You've got to know, God, hallelujah, that God has delivered you, amen, from, hallelujah, that old life, from that old sin. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And in verse, in chapter 6, in verse 7, it says, for he that is dead is free from sin. Hallelujah. When you, hallelujah, have been born again, you know that you're free from sin. God, hallelujah, takes your sin and put them in the sea of forgiveness. Uh, hallelujah, cast them as far as the east is from the west uh, and dares anybody to bring them up again. Uh, but the enemy is going to try to bring them up again. Uh, he will try to help you walk in condemnation. Uh, even after you've been delivered and set free, been born again, uh, the enemy is going to come to your mind uh, and he's going to say, you're not free. Uh, you're still that old person. He's going to try to put all those type of negative thoughts in your mind. Hallelujah. But you've got to rebuke him. You've got the power and the authority to rebuke the devil. Hallelujah. And bring down those strongholds in the mind. It says, for well, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of the strongholds. Whatever the enemy tries to set up in your mind, you may not actually be doing an act or anything. But those things is in your mind to do. Hallelujah. But you got to bring them down. You got to break the chain. You got to bring them down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And know that you can tell the devil, no, that's not me anymore. Those things are gone from me. I no longer how do you commit those type of acts. I no longer do those types of things because I'm free now from sin. I'm walking in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. There is now, therefore, no condemnation to them uh, which are in Christ Jesus, uh, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Uh, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ, uh, Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Uh, for what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, uh, God sent in his own son uh, in the likeness of sin. Set for flesh and for sin, condemn sin, hallelujah, in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but walk after the spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You got to know today that even though you've been delivered and set free, Amen. you got to know that that old man is dead. Yes, you got to know that I don't have to walk that way anymore. Even though even your family members been trying to come up to you and say, oh, I remember when you was this, then, another. You go to family reunions. You're not partaking of the different things that your family's partaking of. Amen. They'll offer you a drink. Come on. Come on. Come on, Joe. Come on. Don't you want a drink, Joe? No, nah, man. I don't do that no more. Oh, why don't you do that? What happened to you? Yeah, that was my old man. He's dead. You know, but this is the new Joe. <laughs> Come on, meet the new Joe, and I'll tell you how you can be new too. So you start witnessing to your family. Amen. 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 Because we, we know the enemy will come in and he will try to pull us back where we were because he knew that he lost a soul. Amen. Anytime you're born again, you come into the kingdom of God, that's the soul that the enemy has lost. So don't think that he's just going to leave you alone. Hallelujah. Just don't think because you got the Holy Ghost, the enemy is just going to leave you alone. 
Hallelujah. You have become, hallelujah, a direct enemy to him. Because you're walking in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. 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 And you, but you got to know the greater is he that's within you than he that is in the world. Amen. Amen. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Yes, I thought that, that man was dead. I thought that man was dead. Hallelujah. You got to know without a shadow of a doubt that what you put to death, amen, you don't have to bring back up again. It can stay dead. Amen. amen. It can stay dead. Amen. amen. You got to continue to pray and fast. Amen. And stay in the way of the Lord to keep that thing dead. Because if not, it's going to come back up. And the thing about it is, as you give in to one part of it, the enemy will open, the, open, the door will be open for the enemy to come in and wreak havoc in your life. And the next thing you know, amen, you amen. think one thing's coming, there'll be seven more things greater coming up on you. You thought you was dealing with one thing then, but you're going to be dealing with more things then. Amen. Because you open up the door for legions to come and wreak havoc in your life. That's why you've got to stay in the ark of safety. you got to stay under the mighty hand of God. you got to dwell in the secret place of the Most High so you can stay hidden. Hallelujah. In God. Amen. Because if you don't, amen, when the enemy comes in and you're wide open, oh, he's going to wreak havoc. And he's coming in with a vengeance to take you out. <laughs> to take you out. So you got to keep yourselves under the mighty hand of God. You got to continue to walk in self control. Amen. Let temperance be. Amen. Be your guard. Amen. Amen. You got to let amen. the Holy Ghost do the work. You got to let the Holy Ghost rule and abide in you. Abide in you. Because if not, the enemy is going to come in. And the thing that you thought was dead is going to come back alive. Come on, let's stand. Come on, let's stand. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for the word that you've given us today. Thank you, Lord, for bringing it to our attention and our mind, God, letting us know, God, that the enemy will come and tempt us again. But Father, we know that we don't have to give in to it. Amen. Because we know that we walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. That you've given us, Lord, something that will cause us to have self-control, Lord, over the things of our flesh, Father. Hallelujah. And we thank you for that. We thank you for the Holy Ghost, God, that leads and guides us to all truth. That's a discerner. Hallelujah. Of the things that are wrong. Hallelujah. We ask, God, that you bless these, your hearts that are here today. Those that may be dealing with things that are flesh, God, that seem like they don't have any control over, God. Lord, we ask, God, that you touch them mightily, Lord, and cause the Holy Ghost to will up in them if they're saved. And, Father, that will give them a supernatural strength to walk, Lord, in the Spirit. Those that are not saved today, that don't have the Holy Ghost, Father, Lord, we know that you're able to, Lord, to endow them with your Spirit today as they repent of their sins, Lord, and they, Lord, submit themselves to you, Father. They will receive, Lord, the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And those that have not been baptized in Jesus' name, it's a way for them to be rid of their sins, Father. As we go down in the water and the sin is buried and the new man comes up. We thank you, Lord, for giving us salvation. We thank you, Father, for being our propitiation. We thank you for being our Savior. We thank you for being our deliverer. We thank you for being our comforter and our keeper and our strengthener, Father. We ask God that you bless these, your people, and we decree it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If anyone desires special prayer today. Amen. Anybody desire a special prayer today, the Lord will touch you, meet you at the point of your need. If you desire a special prayer today, anybody desire a special prayer? Amen. Mr. Muse. Amen. We're going to pray for Mr. Muse today. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of y'all coming out to be with us in our service today. What's your name? Minister Smith. Glad to have you today. What church are you with? Okay, is that uh, Pastor um, Judy Cummins? Uh, no, I to go visit there. Uh, uh, I kind of find, find my life. Oh, man, yeah. Pastor Maynard. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. You're done now. I'm my way. I, I need prayer for that. Amen. Amen. Are you Pastor Uh huh. Praise God. Yeah, praise God. I, I do uh, Thursday Bible study here. Oh, good. Two years. Oh, wonderful. And, uh, one of the things I said, you know, you're Pastor And today, you had a relevant word for me because I needed. Oh my God! I was all Amen. Amen. Oh my God! Thank you. I want to get you a card. You feel you want Thursday? Okay. Eleven o'clock today. Are you? Yeah. No, because I work. You work. I okay. should do. Oh well, that's all right. Well, keep us in prayer. Uh huh. I will. Prayer. Thank okay. you for that word today. Yeah. Well, thank you for grace us with your presence. And I probably will again. Amen. 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 <laughs> well, Father, we pray, God, for our minister, for us. Yeah. Lord, we just ask that you minister to her. We thank you, Lord, for the word, God, that she's received on today. And, Father, we thank you for, Lord, the plans that you have for her in her life. And, Father, we uh, ask, God, that you move mightily upon that, Father, orchestrate the steps, Lord, open doors and opportunities in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you've made the way plain, Father, that you, Lord, have revealed to her specifically what she needs to do, the strategies and, and all the different things that she's to do. Father, we thank you for favor and divine intervention right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, for going before her, making every crooked place straight. Father, that as she goes forth in obedience unto you, you, Father. Lord, we know that you will meet her at the point of the need. We thank you for the souls that you're sending her to, Father. Lord, that you will minister unto them, Father. Lord, that they will come into the kingdom for such a time as this. And we decree it done. Protect and shield her, guard her, and keep her under your mighty hand. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And we did present uh, Sister Bean with her Holy Ghost certificate. She received the Holy Ghost couple of Sundays ago, September the 15th. Amen. We presented her with her certificate. Amen. So we just thank God for adding to the church such as we'll be saved. Amen. So uh, we're going to Amen. We're going to go ahead and dismiss. We are here on Tuesday nights for Bible study. Tuesday night from 6.30 to about 7.30. And then we are here for Bible study. And Tuesday nights. Uh -huh. And if anybody is wanting, I need to get with your sister Bean because uh, we need to sit down and kind of talk about maybe some uh, private times to really talk to you more about an understanding foundation uh, so you can get a better understanding about even being baptized in water and those things, okay? So we'll be getting with you. Father, we ask God that you bless us as we leave from this presence, this place and not from your presence. God bless each and every heart here, Father. And Lord, until we come back at the appointed time, we will decree it done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, wonderful. Please. 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 Please.